Welcome to the Screen the Screener College Basketball Podcast with your hosts, Mike Randall and Gus Kearns. Welcome, listeners, to the Screen the Screener College Basketball Podcast. We're always talking everything college hoops. You could have been anywhere else on the dial, but you chose to be here with us, Mike and Gus, and we appreciate that choice. Uh, Mike, we've been away for a little bit. Apologies to the listeners. We had a couple of too many moving parts going on. We will do our best to keep you company the rest of the college basketball season as we creep closer and closer six weeks away from Selection Sunday the rest of the season. Mike, uh, do we want to update the listeners on anything we were doing during the week off already? Yeah, played a little poker, did a little 2-5, no limit poker. That's my thing. Sat down and went on tilt from winning a hand, Gus, if that's possible, because I I basically sat down and, you know, you sit down two five, right? You start $500 and everybody else got like thousands of dollars. Okay. So what's going to happen? They're going to try to large, bully large, me Large right stacks away. just but, play smart. You know, right. But I'm from <laughs> Jersey, so that's not going to happen. Okay. No, no, you're a so smart, you're immediately, a smart player. Ace, queen. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm calling the big guys raise. Okay. Flop comes, ace, queen, five. Okay. Well, it's time for me to extract like a colonoscopy. <laughs> okay. So – my man's firing out bets, okay? So I'm like, what, he's got ace king? If he's got pocket aces, I'm losing my $500. That's fine, okay? We get to the turn, turns a blank. He bets out 100 I raise him 250 Now, I probably should not have done that, but I thought he would call. I really did. He thought for a long time, and he did not call. He turned over ace jack. So right, I just right, should have out. called and let him try to bully me on the river that kind of bothered me. I got set off and then I got felted late because I had pocket sevens. Flop was nine, nine, six. A uh, series of things happened. Some guy raised right. me. Somebody, I thought he was somebody, somebody had a pocket nine. Yeah, he had a nine. He had a nine. I think he had a nine. I, I, you know, people, yeah, people look at you when you get, you didn't, you didn't think he had it? No, I thought and, he, and, and I got, thought he got and, it. And if, if you got if you got a pocket pair, you have to stay committed. It's not like you, you can get away from that and you want to you wanna show that you have strength in your bet, initial bet. And you want to? I, I get it. I understand. Oh yeah, he, and I, and they're like, D- you, you didn't think he had it? No, guys, I, I put three hundred dollars in a pocket. Cause I thought he had trip nine. <laughs> I mean, it's always the stupidest question ever. Uh, but anyway, that was it. Uh, played a little wheel of fortune, had some fun. But yeah, that's what I was doing. I was away. I'm back, better than ever, absolutely ready. But yes, he had the nine, Gus. Maybe that'd be the title of the podcast. I don't know. He had the nine. <laughs> I, I I did a little. Uh, you know, I, I like to think some college basketball research uh, down at the local theater. Snoop Dogg uh, had an appearance, so I. I uh, we went down to you know with a couple of neighborhood friends to check out Snoop Dogg and uh, where, where, I'm was, sorry, where did he appear exactly? Uh, uh, you know, down in Montclair. Oh, oh, really? He did? Yeah, oh. yeah, the Wilmot Theater. If, you, if you're such a uh, you know a, a Jer- Central Jersey folk, oh. uh, and he um, you know he put on quite a show. Let's just put that. Is there any other show I'm, you can put on? I am also going to say his pimp hand is still very strong, and uh, if any of that translated to late night at the fog at kansas then that makes a lot of sense got it i'm just got gonna it. say that yeah. yeah yeah so there was there was a lot of that uh uh warren g opened up which was fantastic and uh he came out for a set later on uh and the, you know what I, i'm just gonna go a little personal here it was just a little sad during the show because snoop did do a great job, uh, you know, nodding his head in homage to a, a number of hip hop artists that have passed away recently. Whether it be Nate Dogg, you know, who was, you know, part of his crew back in the day, right? yeah. Nipsey Hussle, like that, 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 that whole thing. Like, it, it just seemed like there was a lot of spots where he stopped and bowed his head, and it seemed like too many spots, and that got me to thinking of like, like, why is there so many people? in the hip hop community that are passing away like far too early than need be. Uh, so that just got me thinking. And then that got me like nostalgic uh, about everything and, and, and a little sad. Uh, so I, I tried to, I tried to enjoy, he put on a great show and uh, really brought the house down. It was really cool to see him do his thing. And he was, he was very into it. So Mike, um, and now that we've gone over like what we, you know, poker and Snoop Dogg, yeah, the whole thing, let's do a quick review of the weekend games of note. I think we should start late Saturday night, like Saturday night lights, Saturday night live style, and then just go backwards for the listeners. Mike, Utah State went into San Diego State when they were retiring Kawhi Leonard's jersey 
Utah State was up at the half and then came back and won 80 to 68. Pretty impressive. They dropped 49 points in the second half. Matt Mitchell was going off in the second half. He went for 24 of his 28 in the second half. He's got a little Chris Jenkins to his game. Mike, give me your two cents on Utah State, San Diego State. San Diego State's for real now, right? Uh, San Diego State has always been for real, and and this was very, very impressive because they're doing it without Mensa, who has the respiratory issue, and it looks like he is starting to come back. Mm. Utah State was on fire coming into this game. They buried Air Force. They buried Colorado State, who, by the way, do not sleep on Colorado State next year with their all-freshman backcourt. Carvacho, a tremendous, tremendous team. Buried Wyoming. Okay, fine. But the, I thought they were going to be right in this game. I thought they were going to cover this game. This was a real nice job by San Diego State. Wetzel is vastly important to that team. Mitchell hit big shot after big shot. Just a tremendous all-around job. And I heard this being said. I forget who said it on the CBS summary. I forget who it was. Malachi Flynn has a legitimate argument He's got to be on an All-American team. I don't care where you want to put him, no third, doubt. second. He's got to be. He's that yeah. good. He means that much. San Diego State's for real. I can't wait for somebody to knock him out in the second round because they think they stink. Really solid. Great defense. Mitchell hits the big shots. Fagan's annoying. Wetzel's solid inside. <laughs> Flynn doesn't miss a free throw. Wait till they get Mensa back. Absolutely great win. Utah State's getting it together, but I think us uh, seventeen and seven, six and five in conference. I think they got to win the conference tournament to get in. It, it might be that point for Utah State. I think that's a that, that might be a valid argument. I know we can talk about like multiple bids for the Mountain West due to the down trend of the rest of the big conferences, whether it be you know the uh, the. Uh, 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 whether it be the Atlantic Coast Conference or whatever. But at the same time, I think you really have to pay attention to that second half. They came out and dropped almost 50 points on a team that plays a certain way and values possessions. And you mentioned Wetzel. I'm going to say right now, like, you know what Wetzel is? Wetzel is a less athletic Obi Toppin. He is exact. He's not going to dunk on your head, but he does everything else that Obi Toppin does really well for Dayton. And it's underappreciated because it's not flashy. It's not a highlight on the top 10 on SportsCenter. But I'll tell you what, he makes every other winning play that Obi Toppin makes, because Obi Toppin makes a whole bunch of those winning plays on the offensive and defensive end, whether it be uh, setting a great pick or getting a defensive rebound to end a possession and set up the offense because they they have one of the finest offenses in, in college basketball. But I'll tell you what, Wetzel is a, just a slightly less athletic Obi Toppin. And I'm really impressed with them. And, and your point about Malachi Flynn, spot on. If he's not on an All-America team, then your All-America team is incomplete. That's what it is. It's incomplete if you don't have Malachi Flynn on your All-America team. First, second, third team, whatever it is. All right, Mike, number 20, Colorado at USC. Nothing flashy here to see. Just a very workman-like 76-57 win on the road for the Buffs. Mike, do you think they were a little bit annoyed about dropping that game at UCLA? It sure seemed that way, and it seemed like the Colorado Buffaloes had a little statement to make after that game and said, like, yeah, hey, we're still here, we're still going to hang with Oregon, and we're here to win this Pac-12, and you know what? We're, like, still, a, you know, a quasi-quiet Final Four team or a team that's going to advance in the tournament. What do you think about Colorado's win at USC being very dominant? Yeah, it was a huge bounce back. Kind of predicted that one because that was a bad loss to UCLA. They're a very balanced team. Batty does enough stuff inside, too, to be relevant. They have the go-to player. They work hard. The defense is solid. They're very balanced. They have players at every level. Tyler Bay, the lengthy wing, the whole thing. Yes, they are now a half game behind Oregon. They have to keep pace. They're going to play at Oregon on Thursday, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. Colorado is absolutely a team that can make a run. And I've been saying this over and over again. The way you should fill out your bracket, forget the regular season. Forget what's gone on. It doesn't matter. To look at teams in totality and try to predict do they have what it takes to make a run. 
You have McKinley Wright who can make big shots. They rebound well. They play great defense. They're balanced. This is a dangerous team that no one is going to care about because God forbid they don't play on the East Coast. Yes, it was a nice bounce back win. And I said, if Colorado is as good as I think they are, they will pound USC. And they pounded them. Uh, great call there. And I think there are, I think the other part that we need to mention there, they're extremely well coached. And I think that they're not going to get cheated on that end. All right, Mike, let's go to number nine, Duke. They win at the Carrier Dome, 97-88. Vernon Carey is kind of bananas. He has 26 points and a massive 17 boards. He has to be in the top five of every player of the year conversation, if not the top three. Duke needs to be in a Final Four conversation, even if I really don't want to have that conversation because I never include them inside my Final Four. Mike, what are your thoughts on Carey overall as like a player of the year candidate and Duke on the whole? Are you in on them being this successful after losing three lottery picks? Carey is a very special player. He is fundamentally sound. The old Rick Majerus, God rest his soul, when I heard him in the clinics, a wide body balance, base of support, very strong player inside, crafty around the basket, solid, puts his head down, really impressed with Vernon Carey. And this is the type of team that Kay does better with because everyone has their role. I was impressed with the win at the Carry Dome. They dropped 97. They still usually have the best point guard on the court in most games. Absolutely love Duke. They're probably with Gonzaga. We talked about this last time. The only two teams, I, I think they're clear ahead of people because they're reliable. They're reliable. I, Gonzaga had that big comeback against San Francisco. That's what great teams do. They, they Everybody's going to get behind at some point, like, but, but they, they don't lose the game. So Duke with a big win here on Syracuse. You know Bayheim's going to be up for it and well coached, but absolutely very nice. Mike, I just have a final uh, final Duke thought for you here because we didn't talk about this last week, uh, so I took the week off. Do we need to discuss Coach K going nuts on the crowd when Pitt and Coach Capel visited last weekend and his reaction there? Do you want to discuss how he handled that, the reaction, and then maybe uh, the aftermath of that uh, since we have a little space and a little time? Because as Shakespeare always says and is always correct, and this – Equation has been true for literally 500 years, like drama plus time equals comedy. So is this something that we can kind of like giggle at now or is this something that we have to treat seriously? What do you, what, where do you feel like you're at with Coach K and his treatment with the crowd uh, and how they addressed Coach Capel? Yeah, he was wrong for doing this. This is stupid. He's holier than thou with this garbage. Duke has been doing this stuff for years. They're doing it to Dean Smith. They're doing it to Ev- Beheim. Every opposing coach, the sit-down chance, the hands in front of my face when I'm inbounding the hand. Okay, all of this stuff. They're over the line all the time. They're not any worse than other places. I'm not saying that. But, like, stop. What He thought that the Duke fans were chanting something bad against Jeff Capel. If they said racial slurs, I agree. If they yep. made fun of his family, I totally yep. agree. But yep. Kay, they've been saying that stuff. Sit down. Sit with us all the time. It was weird. He then talked about Kobe affecting him. I forget it. I'm sorry. Like, that's the issue with K. When they win on the handshake line, we have the 12-minute handshake. When they lose, it's Santa Monica Track Club handshakes. Like, just be real, man. Like, you embrace everything that is Krzyzewskiville. You embrace the Cameron crazies. You embrace the <laughs> chanting. On the podium, the next day, he said, well, why can't we say something like, come on, Duke. Go, Duke. <laughs> Mike, you really think that that's what they've been saying for 40 years that you've been there? Come on, Duke. Go, guys. Get that rebound. Uh, Give me a break. Your mothers, your sisters, your aunt, whatever the cheers are, sit down, shut up, air ball. They can chant air ball, but they can't chant Jeff Capel, sit with us. This is the stuff that annoys people about Duke. They win, and they win more than anyone. That's why people hate them. But then just keep it real, Mike. You want them yelling. You want them pointing. You want the fingers in front of people's mouths when they even bat. That's what you want. So don't all of a sudden go nuts because Capel's here with Cherokee Parks next week. Enough. That's the stuff that drives people crazy. All right, so I got a couple of things. Are you ready? 
I, I, I know I know this is like we want to set you up and then you do your thing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple things here. That's okay. Like what 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 was this? Like he was acting as if all the Cameron crazies jumped into a pool, like his pool in his backyard with their shoes on, and their shoes had dog poop all over their shoes. He and he had just cleaned the pool and done like the whole salt ch- salt change and everything else. But he never goes into the pool himself. He just gets it ready for other people and then sits on the deck and coaches in his chair. That's what it seemed like to me. It seemed like a really old man, like, get off my lawn. You don't know what I've put into this property type thing. Yet the Cameron crazies are part of the property and part of the value of that property. The tragedy occupies, like, Real estate in the mind and the heart and the soul. And I understand what you said about Kobe. That, that, that's a factor here. I get that. But the whole thing of like he's one of us, that seems unbelievably ironic. You think Kobe dying had any factor on him screaming at the fans? No, no, right. no, no, no. Like, I, I, no, no, no. The whole thing seems ironic because if Coach K is yelling he's one of us, he's yelling he's one of us at the people that are – the quote unquote us. Yes, 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 thank you. That's where I'm at with that. If you're gonna be that protective of your, I don't know, like lawn or property, then recognize that those Cameron crazies that have been doing the exact same thing, game after game, year after year, season after season, are part of the us too. Yes. And yes. know that they're going to take care of somebody like Capel. They're not going to, they're going to do the same thing. Exactly. They treated right. him the same exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Which they Capel will him, like. Yes. Yeah. Right. They treated him the same way they would treat any other coach. And by the way, that's respect. What they didn't like single that's him you. out or do something different. They treated him as they would treat any other opposing coach. And they did not like do another chant. That said, like, oh, and, and, and by the way, Capel, we love it. No, they stayed the course right. and stuck to the script. Wouldn't you want that, by the way, if you were Capel? I kind of want that. I don't know. I'm coming back. I want to hear it. Bring it. Like Pat Riley, right, with the Knicks? Bring it to me. I don't know. I- so that's all that's right with that. I thought, I thought it was kind of silly. I'm glad, I'm glad you had two thoughts on it. Two cents on it. I had two cents on it as well. All right, Mike, we, 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 we talked about the Pac-12. Oregon falls to Stanford. Both teams now have five losses. Oxford de Asilo went bananas he went for 27 points 15 boards very vernon carry ish uh stanford is sneaky good this year davis is doing a whole bunch of stuff on the perimeter terry is shooting at over 41 percent from three and averaging 15 points a game mike where do you go with this game are you good on the cardinal do you worry about the ducks or is there a little bit of something else in between that you can do here with this one on the pac 12 what do you got i'm an oregon guy so yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I hear you. Yeah, hear like you. it's a bad loss. Stanford sixteen and five. They're five and three. I mean, their 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 vegetable lasagna this year. Okay, I mean they're five <laughs> and three. So is Arizona. Arizona State's four and four. Cal's four and four. Okay, like I, I love, can't love, say love this, that. but I like Oregon. They're really well coached. Pritchard is great. They definitely have struggled a couple times. I, I, I've been surprised. I've been waiting for them to get it together. They need an absolute miracle to beat Washington, who, by the way, is two and eight in conference. I mean, just yeah, yeah. Did, did I miss? I, doesn't it feel like they're like six and five? Like they're two and eight in conference. But can I can I just, can I just jump in here yeah. for a second? Do we need to start? the quad a green player of the year right, conversation right, now like, right. because is he really that important is that is that where this team is is that right now with washington that's they, amazing i mean we talked about uh, I, you know we tweeted this with berg shout out to berg thanks for you know I- interacting with the podcast that's awesome we you know love our listeners out there and if you really like what you're listening to please don't be afraid follow the podcast on twitter at sds podcast efficiency of keystrokes of course please give mike a follow at randall rant you can follow all of his unbelievable college basketball, like, mind, intellect uh, intersections. Like, what he's got going on, he tries to put out on Twitter, and that's just, like, like a sliver of it. So if you really want to get a full, 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 like, Mike Randall college basketball feel, definitely give him a follow. And if you really like what you're listening to on the podcast, 
please don't be afraid to give the podcast a follow and a kind review on your podcast consumption vehicle of choice. We'd love to hear some kind words. We'd love to see a five-star review. And uh, I'll just say right now, like anybody that gives us like a, some kind words on there, we'll give you a shout out on the podcast just like they do on other podcasts. Uh, so kindness is always cool. Don't be afraid to share some kindness, especially during the month that holds February. So, uh, Mike, uh, continue. I'm sorry. I got a little sidetracked there. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think with Oregon? You know, I, I'm trying not to do the old Mike Randall from the last few years because I think this year is very different. And I think the picks in the tournament is going to be different. So mm-hmm. could, could, I'll make the negative case for Oregon quick. You should have beat Colorado. You never beat Colorado. You finally played them on the front of, of the, the doubleheader there, and you got smoked by nine. Okay, yep. And it really wasn't that close. Okay, nope. Peyton Pritchard, four fouls. Can't have it. The whole thing. Fine. You lose at Washington State. It's odd. Okay, it's, it's odd. Washington State. I mean, you want to say Washington State? But okay, yeah, they're better. You're being kind, with the, with but, but the, like with you, you can't lose. Honest. You can't lose by eleven at Washington State. Right. Okay, you lose at Stanford. De Silva, good player. Okay, it's odd. Okay, it's odd. It's odd. You know, you lost. Okay, but okay. They, do, they do. They do shoot the three very well. They do help play a style. They offensive rebound very well. A lot of big guys inside. They're all kind of the same, okay? But they're, you know, and they have a star guard and a great coach. So that's enough this year. It's a bad loss. Um, I'm looking forward to them playing the biggest pillow in <laughs> Division One basketball, Oregon State, on Saturday. I can't wait for that game. But yes, I, I'd like to see them pound Colorado. So does it bother me? Yes. But I still believe in Oregon because I think in a year where everyone's in that interquartile range, Oregon's got the schematic that they can win a bunch of games. They almost made the Final Four last year. This is very true. And they have the same lead guard they had right. last year. Right. And they have – I know they have a Min who is uh, you know, an unbelievable defensive point guard. But they do have uh, Durant and, and, and they do have a shot maker uh, uh, on the perimeter. And they do have bigs inside. They're, 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 there's a lot of things to like about Oregon. Mike, number 25, Rutgers, falls to Michigan – 69-63 at MSG in the sports extravaganza with like hockey and wrestling and curling and archery and whatever else they had going on. It like it seemed like they had multiple sports between the two bet- between the two schools. Geo Baker can only do so much, right, Mike? He he hit the game winner against Nebraska, you know, a week ago. Even though Michigan misses livers. It seems like Brandon Johns Jr. is starting to ball out a little bit here with some opportunity. He's averaging 18 over his last two games with five makes from three. Did Michigan kind of stumble on something here with Johns, Mike? And where are you at with our hometown Rutgers, home state Rutgers, and Michigan overall and the sports extravaganza that was an MSG? No, I think Michigan's one of the most overrated teams in college basketball. Uh, okay. I think uh, they, yeah. they, they were living off the last couple of years. It's not Beeline. It's Juwan Howard. You saw it tonight against an Ohio State team with no DJ Carton. That's been a disaster this year. They gag it at home. Uh, Xavier Simpson suspended. Weird stuff going on. They beat Rutgers at MSG. Nice win. That's all it is. I, I think they've been way overvalued in the market. People still think they're like they were a couple of years ago. They could not stop Caleb Wesson tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. Teske couldn't do anything against them. I think they're in disarray. I think the problems with Michigan are very, very deep. I think they are so overvalued right now because people think this is the team from the last few years, and it is not. Xavier Simpson getting suspended. He's the heart and soul of the team. So to me, Rutgers tonight played very tough at Maryland. Um, came up a little short, but played tough. Yep. But I think it's more about Rutgers really playing solid against Michigan. Michigan is a team right now that I'm fading. Maybe they get it together. Maybe they get it going again. But they rely too much on the three. They don't run much on offense. The team is sort of in disarray. Livers was gone. They're not covering. I don't like Michigan. And God, how much have we changed Gus from like three years ago, huh? Oh, my God. <laughs> where, where, where you were like the biggest Michigan guy of all time. I'm, I'm with you. Oh, my gosh. Man, how things change. And, and change is good, by the way. Change is positive. Change, change is what helped, you know, adjust our country and make it better. Uh, Mike, Texas Tech falls to Kansas, seventy-eight, seventy-five. Two things here, Mike. Not dissimilar from Michigan with Johns Jr. from uh, you know his opportunity and what he's doing and balling out. Christian Bond is like making winning plays for the Jayhawks with his further opportunity because of the suspensions. And can we start to recognize how nasty Jemias Ramsey is? Um, he's an issue. The kid is shooting the ball from three. He's got some dribble wiggle. He defends Texas Tech style. This, this, this guy's nasty. Mike, thoughts on Kansas? Thoughts on Ramsey? 
Uh, are we final? Is can is Kansas Final Four good? And is Ramsey that nasty? Bill Self is really underappreciated nationally, and I mean that because I've criticized him. But in right. this year where everyone is going up and down, he's one of the few stable things. With all the stuff he's been through, the suspensions, he had a little dust up. Gus, a little dust up with Azabuki the other night. He didn't start. But the guy knows what he's doing. Devon Dotson. Real deal in the backcourt. Changes the game. He's gotten great stuff. Christian Braun is an issue. The entire game the other night, Texas, their entire uh, defensive plan, I think, was to not help off of Braun and try to, to keep it close on the rest of the guys. Yaklich yeah. did a great job on defense. Shaka Smart's still going to get fired, but he did a good job. Braun is an issue. Really well coached. Texas Tech, I can't figure out. I, I can't figure out if Texas Tech is exactly they, what we thought they were last year and they're yep. just going to get going, or maybe they're not, and we're looking at them like people are looking at Michigan, thinking they're a lot better than they are. Because tonight they play Oklahoma. They barely escape. They're not really pounding anyone at home. The only game I saw where they destroyed was Oklahoma State at home. So right. lose away at Baylor, fine. Oh, I'm sorry, lose at home to Baylor, fine. Lose away at West Virginia, okay. Um, win at Kansas State, good. Uh, home Iowa State, okay, Iowa State's down this year. Lose at TCU by 11, terrible. Lose at home to Kentucky, I can excuse it. You know, beat West Virginia, lose to – you know, they're very up and down. But, I, I again, yeah. I know we talked about last year, Auburn lost three in a row. Um, Texas Tech lost three in a row. But th- right. th- they got to get going at some point. And I, I, Ramsey is a special player. He was injured early in the year, absolutely. But I'm waiting for them to get going. And I, I don't know right now, man, if I say, no, no, they're going to be good. They're a great coach. They're going to be fine. They're going to get it together. Or they're an early round upset candidate this year. I can't figure them out. I, I'm very uncertain. I think that's a great point. Here's what I'm going to say for either side of the argument. I think uh, I'll reflect it back upon the conversation we had with Jordan Sperber earlier this season on the podcast. And I'm going to include Coach Beard on one of those uh, on the conversation of Coach is going to figure it out. Like Mark Few, like Jay Wright, like Bill Self. I think we can include him in that part of the conversation. And I think the other part we need to pay attention to, too, is they only, like, legitimately, they had two or three scholarship guys coming back. So they're relying on, on some grad transfers, some freshmen. Uh, uh, Chris Clark as a grad transfer is doing, like, freaking everything for them. He's leading them in rebounding. He's leading them in, in assists. He's not even, like, taking on a scoring role yet. Uh, so uh, I, I think they're still figuring some things out. And I, I'm going to trust Chris Beard to figure those things out with this particular squad. And I think they might be undervalued going into the tournament because they might be under as a as a team, as a squad, the talent they have on that squad, and just his coaching uh, chops that he's shown the last couple of years. I, I, I think that's a situation, and I think that's something to pay attention to depending on the number that's next to their seed in March. I think that's, I think that's worth paying attention to. Mike, another thing worth paying attention to is what in the world is going on in the Big East? This Big East weekend was like bananas. Uh, what is Providence doing winning at Butler, 65-61? The Big East is a grind. Xavier won at the Rock this weekend over Seton Hall, 74-62. Mike, does Butler own the same offensive problems, and does anyone, anyone in the Big East want to play the Friar squad moving forward with Duke and Diallo and company and all of that talent that's, that exists on the perimeter with them? Like, what is going on? Yeah, Butler's weird because their regression has gone on a little too long for my liking. Okay, uh-huh. Providence, you're, you're, you're spot on there. Spot on. Providence is very balanced. Um, yeah. You talked about Diallo; he's got to get going, and he has recently to mm-hmm. carry this team. They're big inside; they rebound. The turnovers drive me nuts with Providence. They're way too loosey goosey with the ball, but they're very flammable in the early rounds. We saw it a couple of years ago in the tournament; they can go crazy early. I'm really impressed with Creighton. Creighton is is the type of team with a really good Real, coach, solid Real point guard. Alexander makes big shots. They can make threes. They're shooting very well on the road. This was a nice win. I like Creighton. Creighton is solidly on my radar. I believe in them. Nova's going to be fine. But I, I, I t- my takeaway from this is Creighton, I think, is very good. And I'm on Creighton. And Creighton could win the Big East tournament. 
that's how much I like them this year. And, and that's saying something because no mints. He was gone beginning of the year, right? But And he's a stopper for them. And, and they're not exactly known as a defensive stalwart. But no, I'm impressed with Creighton. Very good. It's going to be a crazy Big East tournament. Yeah, I think the grind is real. And Creighton pound Villanova 60, uh, 76-61 at Wells Fargo. You know, we have to ask which Nova team is real. Is Creighton for real? If you shoot 50%, you can be anybody right up from three, right, Mike? The Big East is a wacky thing this weekend, or maybe it was just right. And, Mike, I think that I think the thing that we need to talk about as well is this Michigan State team. I mean, you and I both watched them lose to uh, Penn State earlier tonight. Um, they, they lost to a, a shorthanded Wisconsin team. And I think we have a couple things to cover here for this particular game. I know they held on, you know, Wisconsin held on for dear life after putting up 40 in the first half. So, Mike, I got four things for you here. One, Wisconsin-wise, is the two big thing a realistic thing moving forward with Reavers and Potter? Is Michigan State still Final Four good? Talk to me about Kobe King leaving. Is that a big deal? And then we can get into, like, the nut shot later. So what do you think with those four things? We'll start with, is Whiskey really that good with Reavers and Potter? Can they, like, you know, reignite, like, the two big thing with uh, UNC and Gonzaga being that good with those two bigs playing? Is that a real thing? Yeah, I I was impressed with Wisconsin. There's some turmoil there. Kobe King was their second leading scorer. He just bolts in the middle of the year because he doesn't get along with guard. There's a lot of issues going on there. Davidson's a jerk. The guy was a nutshot. Some idiot put me in his article and tagged me. I just blocked him on Twitter um, about how it wasn't the nuts. It was it was the leg. Stop it. Stop it. He went to hit him in the in the privates. He, you don't, uh, man. I've come off of more screens. What, what? I was the kid with the headgear and glasses growing up. Everybody screened me. Okay, I got screened right. at the park. I got right. screened at my house. My mom would screen me just to screen me. Okay, that was a shot in the privates because he didn't actually make contact with the privates. Doesn't mean. Nobody hits in the leg. Nobody does that. Okay. He was hitting him in the private. So what he's doing, and that's what he does. He's a nutshot guy. He's the guy who walks around and says, uh, you know, what what I say that what's the capital of Thailand? Okay, just to say Bangkok and hit people. That's what he does. That's who this guy is. But winning that game against Michigan State without Kobe King and without Davidson is impressive. Potter's been very good. He's very active inside. They got to get him involved. They're very streaky. Trice is a streaky shooter, but Michigan State, I'm a little surprised tonight. I thought they were going to pound Penn State. They lose at home. That's a bad loss. So Michigan State kind of with me in the Texas Tech area. I'm not too sure. When I think they're terrible, they're good. When I think they're good, they're terrible. Um, But yeah, I I like Wisconsin. Why not? I mean, they're playing good defense. They're not flamble. They played a slow pace. You talk about the Ken Palm adjusted offensive efficiency being a very key stat, which I agree in the tournament. They're not going to be high on that. But yeah, and, and Davidson's enough. I'm so glad he got suspended. Cut the crap. Uh, I'm with you. Cut the crap, play fair, play the right way. Um, as you know, as a number of coaches, I mean, myself included, like, just play the game the right way. All right, Mike, let's go with a couple other final things. Then we'll go to the bracket reveal. Gonzaga survives. Metric loving San Francisco. And all they do is pay attention to metrics. 83-79. And that's doing something during this nutty season. Like you mentioned, like just surviving. It, it, it is a victory. And the guy that you love to hate, Kitzburg, put the finishing touches on this particular game in the final 30. He had an N1. He had a couple shots late. They're going to be a number one seed when the reveal show is open this weekend, right, Mike? And, 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 and Gonzaga is going to be fine. Yeah, I, yeah, people attack me about Kispert. Guys, like, Kispert scores a layup. All of a sudden, we're talking about Kispert. Oh, Kispert. Guys, he's a Division One player, okay? He has a two-inch vertical, okay? He's a very good shooter. Everyone's <laughs> got a shooter, guys. Okay, he's their shooter. Like, because Kispert makes a shot. Oh, Randall's wrong about Kispert. No, 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 I'm not wrong about Kispert. Kispert is a portly, not fast, power forward who likes to play guard, okay? And he makes some shots, okay? But, like, it's not because Kispert scores a basket. I don't need the tweet on Twitter, okay? He, he He's not better than I think he is. Like, they're a very solid team. The sum of the, you know, all of a sudden, if, uh, what's his name? If, uh, if if Gilder makes a three, oh, Gilder, he's all American. No, he's not. No, he's, not. he's part of the Mark Few Express. Gonzaga's going to be solid. They're going to be a number one seed. They're probably going to win the conference. BYU can't get their act together. Child's getting hurt to kill her. I'm not buying St. Mary's. Absolutely. Can, can they make a final four? Sure. But, Surprise of all surprises, 
Killian Tilly is injured. I got it. That's where I thought you were going to go. I'm shocked. I'm totally shocked that a guy who is not muscular, who doesn't like to bang inside and prides himself on hitting Euro threes is hurt. That's the deal. Let's see what it is. Ayayi, Kispert scores eight. Gilder. Big guy inside has actually been good for them. The the biggest six for eleven. Timmy's been, Timmy's been great. Yeah, he's been good. So uh, Timmy's Petrusa been good. Petrusev has been Petrusev's like you could really you, good. you you could argue that he's going to sneak on an All America team just like you argued Malachi Flynn could too. You could argue oh, that man, I could I could argue the sun is this. I know I could I argue know. the sun is purple, you but I, I you know I could I'll but no I up. I get it like I I'm pre- the point is this. Right. The Gonzaga fans on Twitter are really like the Patriot and the Duke fans now. Like nothing's no, no, nothing's ever wrong. Gonzaga could be giving eighty five points to anyone. They're going to give it. We we can't lose in the count. The Gonzaga faithful pick Gonzaga before the line comes out. Gonzaga versus Hawaii. Ready? I could make the line three hundred and fifty points. I I got to tell you, you know, Tilly's going to be hot tonight. They're at that point. It's like I I suck. They attack me whenever I put anything negative about on Twitter. It's fine. Gonzaga's great. It's a tremendous comeback. That's what great teams do. They come back on the road. BYU couldn't do it at, at San Fran, but Gonzaga could. They're tremendous. But I still think they're vulnerable. I don't they're think totally any vulnerable. one of these guys are great yes. players. I, they don't. What? But they, do they have to be? I don't know if they have to be to win this year. They could easily win the title this year. Absolutely. No, no doubt. And I think we're, we're, we're talking about every team when you say that. I think well, we're talking Gonzaga about every... more than most, though, because they have the great coach. They have selfish, selfless basketball. They can shoot threes. They play. Fa- they they got a lot more checks, Gus, than most. They do. Fair, fair. But I I think if we're going to talk about any team, including the two teams we'll talk about next, uh, the, the, we we can we can bring up warts with any of them, and we of course we can do that with Auburn and Kentucky. That 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 was the big marquee game this weekend, and 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 you know Auburn wins at home. 75-66. This is a one possession game with like 145-ish to play. The free throw discrepancy was a real thing. And Kentucky might be on the outside looking in on this bracket reveal show this weekend, right, Mike? And I, I, I think we have to like really evaluate like, is this a great Kentucky team or is this a good Kentucky team? And how great? How great? And I'll use the word great three more times. How great? How great is this Auburn team and how great has Bruce Pearl been with losing his three top scores and still playing at an unbelievably high level? If it wasn't for Scott Drew, I'd make Bruce Pearl coach of the year and what he's done. They pulled it out tonight at Arkansas. They pulled the game out at Old Miss. Absolutely. Kentucky could sneak in. They win tonight at home against a really good Mississippi State team, and they covered barely, but they did. They could be a four. It's possible. I mean, they, they do have a lot of quadrant one wins. Yeah, Bruce Pearl's done an outstanding job. Outstanding job with what this team is doing. Absolutely. I think that you're correct in valuing him in the proper light. And I think that if, unless you're like Mark Few, if you lose like those top three scores, like what else are you going to do in a league like the SEC? And I think the last thing uh, with the SEC, and I, I mean, I, we don't have this on the, on the show script or anything, but like where are you at with LSU? They are playing unbelievably well in conference. They're still undefeated in conference. Will Wade, you know, similar to Bruce Pearl, was underneath the FBI fog earlier. And now that team is playing unbelievably well, and they, you know, lost Nats Reed and, and the Waters, their point guard, the whole thing, and and they're doing the exact same thing. They brought in some uh, some freshmen, and and they're playing really well as as well. Do you think it's a surprise that Auburn and LSU are atop the SEC after Kentucky and Florida getting all the shine early on in the season? I always thought Will Wade was a great coach. We kind of lost sight when he had the whole recording. You know, I know what it's going to take to get him here, whatever the heck he said. Strong offer. Strong offer. Strong offer, yeah. But they've won 10 in a row, and they're undefeated in conference. And really, they don't have great guards, right? I mean, they have a couple guys, Skyler Mays. I mean, they really don't have the great guards anymore. They they, they lost uh, Tremont Waters, but... Yeah, I'm impressed I, because we talk about it, sustained success. This year, Gus, if you've had sustained success, 
you're separating yourself. Will Wade with this team, which rebounds like the Dickens, okay? And they make free throws, by the way, at 76%. Kind of odd for a team that relies on their interior game to shoot free throws that well, but they do. Really impressive. Undefeated in the SEC. They got Vandy tomorrow night away. Smell you later, uh, okay? Especially with uh, without Nesmith there. Then they got Auburn away. Get your popcorn ready. That's going to be a lot of fun. But absolutely, they've won at Tennessee. They've won at Texas A&M. Not easy. People get tripped up there. They won at Old Miss. They won at Texas. They're getting the job done. Yeah, LSU, Auburn, really nice job. But don't sleep on Cal. Gus, right now you had to pick one team in the SEC to win the SEC tournament. Who are you picking? Oh, Kentucky. No yeah, I know. I agree with you. I, I know. Not, not even a question. I know. How about that? Why? why is that? Because because Cal gets it together. That's why. He's won one title, and the barbershop in Kentucky goes, you know, Cal's only won one title with a lot of talent. Okay, guys, but you know what? Who's replacing him? Come on. How, how about this? I don't think it's totally outlandish and crazy that he could win the title this year. I don't think that's crazy no, in this particular no. year. Nope. Like, if Auburn – if we're just going to stick in the, in the SEC – if Auburn can make a Final Four as a six seed, and their you know reliance on the three pointer, then why can't Kentucky, with their defensive prowess, in a year where offense seems to be a little bit limited and handicapped due to the backed out three point line, why couldn't their defense and their talent on the perimeter get them to a Final Four and a championship run? I, I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's bananas. I don't think it's. I don't think it's outlandish. I don't think it's. I don't think it's like. Far-fetched. I think that's totally logical in some sort of like construct that exists, like in college basketball somewhere. All right, Mike. Coolest thing this weekend. They got the bracket reveal show this weekend. So, Mike, I'm just gonna put you on the spot. I got three questions for you. I got four answers for the first question, one answer for the next question, and a singular answer for the final question. Mike, for the bracket reveal, who are your number ones? And who do you think is going to obtain that number one status right now in February around Valentine's Day? Let's start there. Who are your four number one seeds, and will they match up with what happens on the Bracket Reveal show this weekend? God, I, have, I just want you to know, folks, I've put no thought into this whatsoever. <laughs> zero. I don't believe that for a second. So, uh, z- no, zero. This is all, I was not ready for this. This is off the top of my head. Um, here we go. Gonzaga and Baylor are locks. Okay, so those are your first two number ones. Let me think this through. Huh. Oh, you're really thinking. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gonzaga and Baylor will be the locks. Right. Will they give San Diego State a one? They have to. They're undefeated at this point in the conversation. I think they have to they because have Duke's to. got three. Kansas has three. I don't yes. think you can put a three-loss team ahead. So that no. means Baylor, Gonzaga, San Diego State. Who's the other team? Then you have to think. You know, you have to think about. Since you mentioned three losses, you have to consider two loss Dayton. No, I, I love Dayton. Dayton can win national title this year. I don't think they will put Dayton as the one line. Okay, I, again, I'm just, I'm just it's saying, not that I'm I wouldn't. Saying, it's not that I would. It's what if, they will do. What they if you're going to mention losses, they only have two losses, and right, the two but, losses are an overtime on. Neutral courts. It's two versus three, though, not zero versus three. I, I like Dayton. I think Dayton is one of the top teams in the country. But again, I'm trying to guess what they will do based off of mm. past history. Mm. I do not think they will give Dayton. I'll be thrilled if they do. Thrilled, ecstatic. I don't <laughs> ecstatic, think they will give yes. to. Good um, word, ecstatic. Forget Good. West Virginia. <sighs> Louisville lost to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. They got to go Kansas, right? Yeah, I think they're going to give it to Kansas. You okay. can't lose to Clemson, Duke. I'm sorry. I think they're going to give it to Kansas because Kansas beat Dayton, right? Head to head. And that's why they give it to Kansas over Dayton. I that's agree. exactly why. I that's, agree. Uh, that's why I said so, that. What do you think? I think one seeds are Kansas, Baylor, Gonzaga, San Diego State. What do you got? No, no, those, those are those are my four. Okay. Like I wish I could, I wish I could argue with you because yeah. I, I wanted to have like a different yeah. situation to go with. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I think it's not crazy that in this particular season, it could be a situation where we have three programs that are in the non-traditional top six, top seven, whatever you want to say, 
I'm including the Big East in there because the Big East has won multiple championships in the past five years with the Villanova. So you have to include them in the conversation. I don't think it's crazy that if you're going to include, I, I, I don't think it's nuts that you, we could have three number one seeds in non-traditional programs, the A-10 with Dayton. Yeah. Obviously the West Coast Conference with Gonzaga and the Zags and, and, and the Mountain West with San Diego State. The Zags are in familiar territory. They're operating at a kind of insane level on the offensive end. Of course, they're going to be a number one seed. And, and you know, if they drop that game against San Diego, uh, I'm sorry, San Francisco, then then maybe you take a second look at that. But they didn't. They pulled that win out. Dayton is shooting twos at a historic rate. They're shooting over 60% while still shooting 36% from three-point land. And Oak Toppin is a legit stud and a player of the year candidate, while Crutcher is a true shot maker on par and on level with Peyton Pritchard. And now maybe we can include Kobe McEwen in that conversation with his performance against the uh, Xavier Musketeers and his overtime situation. Like, Crutcher is that type of shot maker. And I don't know if anybody paid attention to this. This is a little while ago. But San Diego State was up 17 zip at the pit. And the pit used to be one of the most treacherous places to play, whether you were in the Mountain West Conference or not. And they were up 17 zip and then came back and dropped almost a 50 spot on Utah State in the second half after Kawhi Leonard got their got his uh, jersey retired. So if any of those three teams, Zags, Dayton, or San Diego State, are one seeds, guess what? There's no argument. There's no argument from this podcast, and there should be no argument from anybody else anywhere else in the college basketball landscape. All right, Mike, now that we got our bracket reveal stuff here, you ready to talk about a couple cool players that like went bananas uh, for the people this weekend and, and, and really like showed out and like showed that they were like, you know, they, they were the man? Hit it. All right, I got Lauren Christian Jackson from Akron. The five eight point guard is averaging 19 points a game, five assists a game, six rebounds a game, shooting 46% from three. Can you just do me a favor? Listeners, do me a favor. Just let these numbers sink into your mind, into your basketball uh, you know, lexicon. This is his last 10 games scoring. Ready? 26 points, 17 points, 26 points, 19 points, 17 points, 33 points, 20 points, 35 points, 28 points, 19 points, all while shooting over 50% from three. The Zips got a guy. He's the guy. Lauren Christian Jackson is the guy. Dang. Yeah, he's been super impressive. I've loved Akron all year. Really enjoyed mm-hmm. John Gross. Done a good job. Disappointed on the back-to-back losses to Buffalo at home. That's a bad one. And Kent State away. Uh, and that was, that was really, the, the Kent State game was a great game. It was a great game. It was a great, great game. game. He's been fantastic. Muskrat love. Fantastic. Love Lauren Christian Jackson. It was a really, really good call by you. And uh, the next player that I'm going to talk about, we mentioned him just previously, Kobe McEwen. The du- double over T win against Xavier, he was bananas because – we have Marcus Howard out with his face slash concussion in- injury. Kobe owned the end game situation with the Golden Eagles. He scored 18 points in the final minutes in overtime with big shot after big shot after big shot initiating the offense. Winning in double overtime on the road in the grind that is the Big East without your All-America is really impressive. I'm super hyped that Kobe McEwen has found his Robin role next to Marcus Howard as Batman. And I think if those two, if if Kobe Kuna can play at that level and and Marcus Howard can keep doing his thing and average 30 points a game and like just be like like this shot maker from 30 feet that is, you know, quasi unguardable and keep finishing with some efficiency in the lane, which he has improved with this particular season. If they're going to operate at that level, then Marquette is dangerous and they have John in the middle that's going to like, you know, beat people up and punch people in the face and defend and block shots and, you know, end up the game with like nine rebounds and five block shots. Like if they're going to do that, then Marquette's dangerous as a six seed, seven seed, whatever seed they might end up having. They're really dangerous. I'm super impressed with Kobe McEwen. And I was really impressed with that particular performance. 
against the Musketeers. You know, it's funny. You, you've said things on this podcast over several years that I, I, I listen, we're talking, then I go home and I, I think about it. And then I say, what the hell is he talking about? You said, I brought up Colby McEwen in the last pod, and you said NBA player. Okay, and, and I go... Totally! And I go, NBA player what? What, what NBA player? If he's an NBA player, where there's 6,000 NBA players. But no. sure enough, sure uh-huh. enough, the very next game, I'm sitting there getting felted because I didn't think the guy had a nine, and I'm watching Kobe McEwen <laughs> shot after shot burn my in-game wager. It's like the extended middle finger. And this is not the first time you've done this. You've said things before. Guys averaging 1.4 points a game. I'll tell you, he's an NBA player. And I'm like, what is he talking about? And the next game, the guy's got 30 and 20. It just happens all the time. So, yes, I have to tell you, I was very impressed with Kobe McEwen. That's an impressive road win. Great job by him. Did not think it was coming. No Marcus Howard. No problem. We got Kobe McEwen. And, and the Big East is a grind. It was fantastic. I can't wait for the Big East to finish. It's going to be fantastic. All right. How about this? Let's go out west. We talked with, uh, you know, we'll mention Jordan Sperber again. We mentioned uh, New Mexico State when we talked to him because he, you know, is a former coach there as well. How about Jabari Rice? The 6'4 guard might take a little bit of the lead role, even though the Aggies are like team first and share their minutes because fellow guard uh, Queen is out with an injury for about a month. So Rice, you know what he does? He does lots of things positive on the court. He shoots it from three over 40%. He can defend multiple positions. He handles the ball a little bit. He rebounds as an undersized four. Think of former Aggie stud Jamario Jones. Rice is going to be that difference maker. And Rice has really been impressive the last three, four, five games. And I think you're going to see his minutes like stay at that 30-minute level, even though the Aggies really like to play you know, everybody 20 minutes and 10 minutes and, and get that rotation going. He might be the guy that they keep on the floor during that rotation. Really impressed with Rice, really impressed with what he's doing. And I think the Aggies, undefeated in conference, really are going to rely on him to, 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 to win this conference title. I agree. They're one of the teams that people are going to sleep on. Also, they lost to Auburn last year in the first round of the tournament. By <sighs> so close. One. So close. They have a lot of guys back. Rice has been fantastic. Completely agree. This is a team to watch out for. Very well coached by Chris Jans. Undefeated. Cal Baptist two games behind. Don't worry about them. Absolutely agree with you. New Mexico State, a true Cinderella possibility. No doubt. I think we just missed on them last year. And when then we saw Auburn go to the Final Four. You know, that could be a team that you want to pay attention to during March. And I think we have to we have to mention this. And this is like a this is like a really cool story. And, and you know, maybe I'll go a little personal here. We'll see where the conversation goes. But Elijah Joyner, Tulsa, he hits the game winner against a national ranked team that is part of March Madness and Final Four folklore with Wichita State. And this backstory is that his dad is in the stands for the first time to see him play as a college basketball student athlete. He hits a double clutch three pointer from like 30 feet as the buzzer sounds and defeats the Shockers. That's like so cool. It's like Kobe cool. If you haven't watched the post game with Joyner and Coach Haith, go spend that 54 seconds. It's going to be the best 54 seconds that you spend as a college basketball fan. Go do that. I, we, we, you know, Mike and I never tell you to go do things and go look at this and go look at that. Please do yourself a favor and go go view that and see the emotion that's behind that. Mike, thoughts on Joiner in Tulsa, who is, by the way, leading the, the AAC right now over ranked teams like Houston and Wichita State and Memphis. Like, how is Frank how is Frank Haith doing this? And just how important and how powerful is that Joiner shot to you personally and you know, where are you at with that? I, I, th- that's why that's why sports is great, right? Yeah, Jordan Shot was awesome. Dad has never seen him play. That's the first time they see him play. It's a dream come true. Awesome moment. Really, really special moment. Best moment so far of the college basketball season. Tulsa's the real deal. They've beaten Houston. They beat Memphis, Connecticut, 
overtime. Which that was away. Wichita State. They're seven and one, flying high. Frank Hate's done an outstanding job. They defend the three well. The fourth best defending three point defending team in the country. Love that inside outside. They got the magic there with the shot. It was an awesome moment, man. And, and, you know, just go a little personal here. And, you know, we usually don't lift the, the, the curtain that much on the podcast. And Mike and I kind of keep it straight. You know, growing up in a, in a fatherless household, I, I, I've tried to, like, you know, attempt to, you know, not reconnect, but at least put the pathway together to figure out who, like, you know, that guy is. So the fact that, like, Joyner had that moment with his father, I think is really going to, uh, like, when I heard about the story and then read about it and researched it, like personally, like I, I think that I'm gonna, gonna like push forward to find out like you know who my guy is. And no, I'm not gonna hit a shot to win a you know win a game against the Wichita State Shockers, but at least to like have that relationship exists in real life, and it it, is, it made some sense to me in multiple levels, like whether it be sports wise or relationship wise or. You know, now that we're older, like health wise, and you want to have some history. So it, was, it, it, I felt like that particular moment really hit home for me. And I understood the emotion that was expressed in the post game from Coach Haith and from Joyner. I thought it was really real, I thought it was raw. And I understand why that was so powerful. And so. You know, again, Mike and I never ask you to go do anything, and you know, it's it's Valentine's uh, Day this month, and all we're going to ask you to do is like go connect with somebody that you love, whoever that person is, like whether it be a family member or a friend or an old teammate or somebody like that. Like, go make that go make that reconnection, go make that happen. Like, that's I mean, the, 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 we, we we use sports to do that, and, and obviously Joiner and his family did that and use sports to make that happen and as that was, that was the vehicle but it doesn't have to be the vehicle you can just like you know send a text or you know give a call or you know jump in the car and go drive and go talk to that person so we're going to ask you guys to go do that um that that that's our we're not asking you to give leave like a a podcast like you know a review or anything but i think that might be the thing go go spread some kindness and, and reconnect with that person that you're really close with uh mike we didn't get a chance to talk about Kobe, and I think the, the the story with Joyner and his dad being in the stands, and then you know our thoughts on Kobe. Uh, he's not going to be a dad that's in the stands anymore. Um, did you? I feel like we need to open the floor a little bit. You got, you got, you got. You know what? What? What, what were your reactions when uh, when you heard about Kobe and 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 as a sports fan and a, and a hoops fan? The Kobe thing. It transcends sports, and it's not that Kobe Bryant, um, you know, his life should be mourned and then, after the fact, celebrated more than than the other people on the plane. But Kobe Bryant represents, I mean, a guy who is an incredible athlete, who is someone that people connect with, someone that, you know, sports is an escape, right? So there's so many people who went to those Laker games having trouble personally, professionally, and just wanted to sit back and watch somebody put on a show. And Kobe delivered that uplifting moments that I guess there's the part of it that says if it can happen to him with all his resources and all his fame, then it can happen to all of us. So I think that is what has really rocked the majority of of people is that this guy had it all and he was a great player and he was a clutch player and he was the father of daughters, which is a very special connection, Mm -hmm. just like a mother with a son. I mean, same sort Mm -hmm. of thing. Like, Right. And and he suffered and died tragically. And if that can happen to him – it can happen to anyone. And and that's what I think really hits home with people. And he was a great player. He had great moments. Um, he was a legend of the game. And I think it's it's the fragility of life that really connected with so many different people. Um, because he had all the means, you know, that there was no alcoholism there was no drug addiction there was no you know like it yeah, it wasn't yeah. that it was he was taking his daughter to a basketball game 
Like, and that's what just makes it so, so hard to comprehend. And I think the other part that goes along with this, and, and, and you know this as well as I do, being the father of a daughter, and I have two daughters, and I think the daughter part was the, the, the most crushing of the news there. And, 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 and the one thing that I kept reflecting back upon was with Kobe very recently. Um, he advocated for the women's game and said that, like, you know, Elena Deladon and, and, and Swin Cash and uh, Sabrina Nescu and, you know, who, you know, whoever he included in that conversation could hang with NBA players and, and, and play the same way. And, and, and the fact that he advocated for, for women's basketball and being a coach of not women's, but girls' basketball at this point in my life and um, having a a daughter who's a, a basketball player, it, it, it just all like hit really close to home. And I think that the, 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 the relationship that he had with Sabrina Nescu from Oregon really spoke volumes because he invested not only in the rela- relationships that he could have within the league, which are easy. Those are easy relationships. You always see the handshakes and the jersey trades and everything in the NBA. He went out of his way to champion, to empower the women's game because he had a daughter that he could, you know, if he was going to play fortune teller, could be part of that landscape. And I think that's a part that like hit really close to home for me and my family. And, um, having a you know a, a baller daughter that I always like to call her like. And, you know, there's plenty of times where she's shooting on the Nerf rim, like in the living room, where, you know, she's doing like a, you know, a Giannis crossover and says like, Kobe. And that's like a reference to him. Like, so I'm sure everybody has a moment or a, a something or an instant or an illustration that like, you know, copies that or mimics that. And, uh, and I think that's going to be his, you know, his legacy is that like he's been in, just, you know, he, he's found his way inside of everybody's, like, basketball culture, whether it be men's basketball, women's basketball, or basketball overall. Um, so, obviously, like, our thoughts, good vibes, send to the friends, family, and everybody that has suffered for this. But um, it's I think it's definitely inspired conversation and thought that makes everybody reflect in a positive way and makes everybody like look upon like what they can give and what they can do and what they have presently in front of them and maybe enjoy that a tiny bit more or embrace that a little bit more or empower that a bit more, whether it be on the men's or the women's side for hoops. Um, all right. Definitely. Mike, let's, uh, let's end on a positive note and with a little six pack of games for the listeners. What do you say? Good. All right, let's see if we can transition to that. Let's go Wednesday. We got number 10, Nova, heading to number 19, Butler. We talked about the Big East being a huge grind, Mike, but in the best way. Mike, what does Butler and their pace of play do to win this game? Or is Nova's three-point percentage, will they roll on the road, or are they going to run into another problem similar to they ran into with Creighton? What do you think in the Big East on Wednesday in the grind that is the Big East? I think Aaron Thompson should be back, um, and which would help Butler. I, I'm, I'm struggling with Butler. They're one of the teams that I, I struggle to handicap. Totally uh, with you. That's a bad loss to Providence at home. Um, because, like, if you want to, to – like, Providence is good, fine. But, like, you, you got to get that one home after losing three in a row – and then losing at home in overtime to Marquette, like, or winning in overtime Marquette, like you have to get that one home. So, I don't have a lot of confidence in Butler showing up in this spot. I I think Villanova has the better coach. I think the best player on the floor is Butler, but they've had the best player on the floor in a lot of games this year, and they haven't found a way to get it home. So, Thompson back helps. You know, Nova. Coming off the loss to Creighton is going to be frisky. 
probably lean Nova here, especially because right now Ken Palm has it at Butler minus four. And oh. I I would take the points there. I, it's a hard one because Kamar Baldwin can just – Kamar Baldwin, human – Bet destroyer. Okay, <laughs> that, that's what he. That was the title of the podcast. That might be Kamar, the title of the Kamar podcast. Kamar right? Baldwin can. Re- Kamar Baldwin wrecks bets. Okay, he does. But and he you've totally loved does. him. You've loved him for years. You are, oh yeah, as, yeah, as you are yeah. with all players. You're the first one on the bus, and I'm hanging out, not even paying attention, and the trolley runs me over, and then I go, yeah, hey, okay, hey, I'll hey, get hey. Can I can I can I get some props here? Eric Fawcett was with me on Kamar Baldwin. Okay, yeah. Well, he I was, think you, he, you are Kamar Baldwin before we even start the podcast. I think. I mean, I think. <laughs> You want to come up with high school, but uh, I I think it's close. But if I'm getting four, I'm going to grab Nova. How about that? Oh, I, I'm totally with you there. And I think the the big thing here is that Nova wants to play the pace that Butler wants to play, but they're going to have more shot makers. Mm-hmm. Butler has you know like one and a half shot makers, maybe with like Tucker Jordan, um, Jordan Tucker, and like that. So, but I'm going to take the more I'm going to take the the, the the more shot makers of Villanova there. Mike, let's go Thursday. And we're going to go a little offbeat here, but we're going to go a little hometown for me. Thursday, William & Mary heads to the College of Charleston. We are looking at two NBA draft picks here in this game. I'm not exaggerating this. They might be first-round picks. They might be second-round picks. I'm not down Both- anymore. Colby McEwen is going to have 50 next game. <laughs> Good. It's fine. <laughs> Both of these players are getting picked. Nathan Knight from William & Mary and the Tribe and Grant Riller are going head-to-head inside the CAA. And guess what? They're both 8 and 3 tied atop the CAA. First place is on the line here, Mike. You got the Tribe or you're going Cougars? It's a tough one. I've liked the Tribe this year and the Tribe has made me a lot of money. So they sure have. I, I <laughs> So Nathan Knight has been tremendous. What's interesting about William and Mary is people kind of were off of them. And they didn't think that they were going to be good this year. I know preseason yeah, transfer, post. new coach, the whole thing. Yeah, I get new it. coach, yeah, the sure. whole thing. But right. they've been okay. Eight and three in conference. A little frisky lately. Lose at Drexel, win at home against James Madison. Lose at home to Towson. Beat Northeastern at home. Lose at home to Hofstra. By the way, there are very few bets if you're out there betting that are more automatic than Hofstra on the road in conference. I just got to tell you, I got to do the numbers on it. Hofstra at home, a little shaky. Lost Delaware, didn't cover. Okay, But uh, Hofstra on the road in conference is automatic. That's just total random point that nothing jo- to do with Joe Mahalik, jo- doing a good job. <laughs> uh, on, on the road, Hofstra. Oh, my God. But uh, yeah, I, I'm going to lean William & Mary. Grant Real is amazing. It's an amazing game. Okay, I, I'm going to lean William & Mary, especially if you give me six, which is what Ken Palm has it at right now. Okay, well, if, if that's the situation, I'm going to go William & Mary as well. I didn't know it was going to be that high. If it was a little bit lower, I would maybe go Char- College of Charleston. And look, both of these guys are going to play in the, in the league. It, there's no doubt. So if you, if you tune into this game, you're not going to be short-sold. Short like, both of these guys are going to be NBA players. All right, Mike, let's go Friday. One of our favorites, Ivy League. Harvard versus Yale. I have a very strong feel here. After watching Princeton Harvard live this past weekend, I have a really strong feel here, Mike. What do you feel about Harvard versus Yale? My issue with Harvard, I love Harvard, and I've bet on Harvard a lot this year. Right. My, my problem is they're not playing defense at the rate that a team that plays that pace needs to, right? Bryce Aiken still not back. Nope. Right. Okay. So no. Br- did Seth did Town- not see him in person. <laughs> right. Seth Towns is out this year. He's done. Uh, no yep, Bryce transfer. Aiken, and they're not playing defense. Not at the level that they have been. They're giving up Correct. a lot of points. I-, I don't know how I can pick Harvard. Then, like, are they going to outscore Yale with all their size inside? Who won on the road at Clemson? I know it's Clemson, but I, you know Duke lost to Clemson. I'm just saying, you know, like <laughs> I, I'm pr- I, I like the transfer property. Right I, there. I'm Very probably nice. going to go Yale. I love Harvard. I love what they do. I think they're so underrated. They're tough. They've covered even when they didn't have Aiken, but Yale. They're not going to sneak up on Yale. And I've been really impressed with Yale and the big guys inside, as are Swain for three, one of my favorite under-the-radar guys. <laughs> Swain was great, yeah. Um, was great. I kind of lean Yale. What do you got? Oh, I'm leaning Yale as well. I, I think after watching the game in person, and we had really great seats. Uh, we sat right underneath the basket uh, with the girls. And, and uh, luckily, uh, That's awesome. Princeton, Princeton was down at our end, and they hit like seven threes. So, uh, you know, my, my, my girl got to see – 
oh man, they made another three, another three. Like so, we got it. It, it, it was really, really. You were right cool. on that second half cover, by the way. They didn't look good for a while. I, I, I told you that was going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and they I, and Harvard had a shot in the air with uh, you know no no time on the clock to win that thing. It, it was an unbelievable game. But I'm going to tell you what. I, here's what I'm going to tell you what I took away from the game. Number one, Hutchinson, great coach for for Princeton. He's really involved in the game and involved in each possession. And I'm going to say the complete opposite for Tommy Amaker on the sidelines. I was really unimpressed with how unengaged he was with his players during the game. From you know coaching you know, uh, you know girls basketball, like I think I think you have to like at least give your players a little. I, I know you want to run your stuff and you want to have your things like go the right way, and you've practiced and you want to do that. Really unimpressed with his in-game coaching. So if I'm going to go one way here, I'm going to go very heavily Yale because I was really unimpressed with how they operated in-game. Did they come back down 10 with four minutes to go and had a shot in the air to win the game on the road? Yeah, they did. But was I impressed with the, the adjustments and the changes that they made during timeouts? No, he didn't call a single timeout the whole entire time. So, Mike, also Friday... Number nine, Maryland visits number 20, Illinois. This is like some Fox Sports 1 Friday fun, if we're going to like alliteration here. One of these teams could be in the conversation in a couple of weeks for one of those number one seeds. I have a feeling that both of these teams could be in the selection show that comes up with the top 16 teams. Mike, Maryland on the road? Are you trusting them yet? After the win over Rutgers, or are you buying in on Coach Underwood at home? Oh, Coach Underwood. Coach Underwood. Because, no, Gus, no, no doubt. <laughs> the rebounding matters. Okay. Right. And all Illinois, and listen, I, listen, folks, let me explain something to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen to people and preach and take notes. Okay. The, there are bets you make that you win by luck. And there's bets that you make that you really nail. I'm going to call it the comfortable cover, okay, or the comfortable win. Folks, Illinois plus five against Iowa was the right pick. Them scoring like seven points in the last 30 seconds doesn't mean that you should be pounding your chest that you knew the Hawkeyes were going to cover. Illinois had that game. The big man Coburn was in foul trouble, and they still had that game. Luca Garza, who, by the way, is my player of the year in the nation right now, hit four threes. Now, listen, he can make those shots, but go check the box score. Ain't too many he's made four threes in his career. Okay, babe? So here's the deal. Illinois has always, always showed up. They showed up at Wisconsin. They showed up at Iowa even in a loss. Maryland... With Turgeon, give me a break. Nice win in Indiana, by the way. But, like, guys, I'm taking Illinois. I think they could be the best team in the conference right now. I know Maryland is talent, and Anthony Cowan's great, and Jalen Smith inside, the two-time Maryland player of the year. I know, okay? I'm not trusting Turgeon in a big spot. I like Illinois. They got a nice home court advantage. They, they got the kid who was suspended for two games, came back. He hits big shots for them. He hit big shots against Iowa. I'm all in. Uh, ben Chavili, Ben Chavili, however you say his name, Georgie, I'm in. Illinois nice. at home. Love him. Uh, I'm kind of with you there. I like them also uh, running the point. I like Frazier off the ball, making some shots. And I like Underwood, and I like the offense that he's running. And I think you have to, if you're going to default one way or the other, I think you default to how things have gone inside the Big Ten at home. So you take the home team here. All right, Mike, let's go to Saturday. This is a tradition. We have number two, Gonzaga, heading to St. Mary's. Mike, tell the listeners why Gonzaga might lose, or are you on the Zags bandwagon? To me, St. Mary's is Jordan Ford, who's superb. And by He's the way, awesome. And has the clutch gene, which is really something I hold in, in high regard because I think it's very hard to make clutch shots. You had the clutch gene. I did not. So I, I love Jordan Thank Ford. You. I think he's special. I don't buy any of the other guys. I don't buy Malik Fitz fouling out on a three-pointer. Can, can, can I call a timeout there? Can I call a timeout there? 
Malik Fitz is an NBA player. I know we just discussed this. <laughs> I, I, it's amazing. I, there's only two rounds, yet 175 people are getting drafted. It's really, it's he, really he, he, He's an NBA player, and he will get drafted. He's 6'8", can shoot it from three. He shot it from 30 feet. He can create off the dribble. He's an NBA player. He will get drafted a lot. I mean, Jordan Ford will probably find his way in the league as well. All right, sorry, continue. I got to start writing down all the guys you say are going to get drafted because I'm going to look back at you and say, who's not getting drafted? Because you have 170 guys drafted. Somebody's not getting drafted. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But Malik Fitz is, is an excellent he, shooter. He's legit. He's legit, Mike. I'm not I'm not getting off that. He's legit. He's. I, I, I don't know what he's legit about. I, I mean, <laughs> like, there's been plenty of games he had... <laughs> Four points, like you know, but right? but like he gets hot and hit twenty five, and all of a sudden everybody's like, "Oh, well, we know Fitz was an All American." Oh, here we go, here we go. I mean, like <laughs> Malik Fitz was on fire at BYU. He's been on fire other games, and he's been ice cold other games. Like he's a streaky shooter. He's a very good athlete. Tax the basket. Needs to attack the basket more. I'm not impressed with the rest of the team. Tanner Krebs, you can keep him. Okay, it's Jordan Ford. Okay, it is. And, and, it is. and he's the driving force. Gonzaga is too well balanced. They have too many options. They play as a team. I the only time that Bennett has come up in a big spot with the Gales at Gonzaga was when he had Jock Landell. Very okay. Good. Yep. He doesn't have Jock Landell. He has no. Jordan Ford, who's awesome. Right. Okay. Right. But I just don't think they have enough, bro. Uh, what? Let me say. What do you think Ken Palm has it at? Let me check it out right now. I, I, I bet I bet he has Gonzaga by five. That's my guess. Uh, he's oh, it's it's it's. I'm sorry. Well, the game's at St. Mary's. He's got Gonzaga by two. I mean, that's two. Just, okay, that's just, all that's right. just an all in. I mean, that's just. I mean, that that's that's an all in for me. I'm so I just don't see it. I mean, this is no, no. this is a St. Mary's team who. And again, the Gonzaga has owned it there. St. Mary's team, who at home handled Portland, yep. should have lost to BYU without Ueli Childs. I mean, they, they really couldn't stop TJ Hawes. Just think Correct. about that for a second, okay? And they ha- and Jordan Ford was amazing that game. Uh, and they lost at home to Santa Clara. I mean, I, I just... <laughs> I don't know how you take it, St. Mary's there. I don't know either. I, I, I don't, but it, like you know, who knows? Here, 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 here's I think the only thing that you need to pay attention to. I think Woolridge is that special on the defensive end, and I he's think a, he's, he's gonna, excellent. He's excellent. I think he's going to make it that difficult for Ford on the offensive end. Ford will get his stuff. I'm not denying that Ford will get his looks. He'll get his makes. He'll get uh, you know he'll get his 20 points. Ford will put up 20. But it's going to be the mo. It's going to be a really hard earned twenty against Woolridge, and I bet Woolridge has seven and you know three, and it's going to be the most like pedestrian seven and three of all time, because he's going to put the clamps on Ford on the other end. And you know what I'm going to tell you about Fitz? As much as I said Fitz is going to an NBA player and he's been playing great, and I, he, he's he's been playing out of his head. If you go look at the box scores, he's like been crazy. Gonzaga has athletes that are going to match up with him, whether it be Kitsbert or Timmy or whoever it might be. They have people that can put him in place, and so they're, they're going to pay attention to him. Uh, so I think if you're going a one way here, I think Gonzaga is the way to go. And let's go Sunday. Wichita State heads to number 25, Houston. We have a biting person versus a buzzer beater person uh, a, a situation. Both are chasing Tulsa. Uh, in the in, in conference, they both need this win. Mike, are you going Shockers or are you going Houston? Which way are you going on Sunday with this matchup inside the in, inside the conference? When the Shockers were on their run, there the old beat Oklahoma State away, beat Oklahoma at home, beat Old Miss at home, beat Memphis at home, double overtime win at Connecticut. I was all in on the Shockers. I think there's been a market correction on the Shockers here. Temple away, lose. Houston home, pounded. Uh, Tulsa away, lost at the buzzer. I'm going to go Houston. It's going to be no Dijon Giroux. Wichita State's going to have to play Cincinnati on Thursday. That's not going to be easy. Houston really does rebound well. It's a tough one. Right now, it's going to be Houston by about five. Eh, no Giroux, though. That's a tough call for me. 
I'll take the home team to win. Let's see what the line is. I like Wichita State, but I think they were a little too, you know, like they were getting a little too much street cred early on. They're still shooting just 45% from two point range. That's 315th in the country. And they're also shooting 69% from the free throw line. Kind of hard, man, for me to back a team that struggles from two and can't make free throws on the road at Houston. That's kind of a tough one. I I think they'd have to have a massive game from three. That's a tough one. I'm going to lean Houston. I'm going to lean Houston as well. I can't believe we're going the same way there. I I think originally I was thinking uh, Wichita State. But I think even with no Giroux, who both of us love as a college basketball player, and he does a lot of interesting things besides taking bites out of uh, other college student athletes, um, I, 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 I think that that's the way to go. And I think coaching-wise, I think it's kind of a wash. I think both of the coaches are really strong. But if you're going to lean one way or the other here, I think you're going to go home team here, especially in conference. And... I don't know this Wichita State team. They, you know, they got up and got ranked, but maybe, maybe that was just like a, you know, a, you know, like a hey, we still recognize you. Here you are, and and maybe they're one of those teams that ends up like on the bubble, you know, come March, and where they're kind of looking and like hoping to get in and get one of those twelve seeds. And by the way, if they're one of those twelve seeds, like everybody in the nation is going to pick them, you know, to be that they be that five team. But I, I feel like that might be the way that they might be heading, especially if they lose this particular game to Houston. So I think that's something to keep an eye on as well. Maybe that Wichita State Shocker team that was like playing well earlier might end up being like a bubblicious team uh, later on and, and be in a little bit of trouble uh, with a couple of other teams that have a whole bunch of warts as well. Uh, Mike, it was so nice to catch up and talk hoops. Is there anything else that you have for the listeners out there? No, I'm good, man. Excellent time as always. We could go on for another two hours. I I have a couple other things we could talk about, but I think to be kind and considerate of the listeners, I think that's where we'll call it quits. So listeners, again, if you're like what you're listening to, please don't forget to give the podcast a positive follow on your podcast consumption vehicle of choice. Give the podcast a follow on Twitter at SES Podcast. Efficiency of keystrokes, of course. Give Mike a follow at Randall Rant. He is in full college basketball mode now at the football season is over and we're just going to say hey thank you for letting us keep you company during the college basketball season whether it be on a commute a workout or whatever you might be doing we're so happy to keep you company and thank you for allowing us to do that uh cheers salancha grazie we will catch up with you before you know it